That the Lord Jesus did for you this week. You may have any miracles. God know. Um, anybody have any kind of uh, physical miracle? Financial? Some cool uh, uh, testimonies with your time with Jesus? No. Well, I got to say, if um, um, if you're not having a communion with the Lord and having a relationship with the Lord in your daily life, seek out and, um, you know, focus on uh, getting to know him more. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not seeing anything happen, either in your worship, your Bible reading, your prayer, or in things around you, um, you're not where you need to be. Mm -hmm. The early church did not have, guys, the early church did not have this this uh, New Testament word, yet they did ten times more in the book of Acts than we're doing now. And if you look at the book of Acts, you'll see um, operations of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Do you guys know what the nine gifts of the Spirit are? You got the power gifts, you got the revelation gifts, and you got the spoken gifts. Nine gifts. Paul said, don't be ignorant now. Some of us are really streetwise, right? You guys here in the men's home, some of you guys come out of the joint. You know how to operate in the joint. You know how to sling dope, sell dope, cook dope. Well, you better be able to cook something up in the Holy Ghost and hammer the devil, or else you ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, you are something because of the cross. You are something because of the blood of Jesus. You're special, you're loved, you're valuable. But I'm talking about, look, man, 40, 50-year-old guy, and you got a diaper on, you might be streetwise, but spiritually, you're weak. We don't want to be weak. Testimonies, come on, testimonies. Not a testimony. Testimony, something that God did. You know, something. I'll oh, go ahead, David. Um, well, I got a couple. I got um, one young lady that I've been trying to um, um, preaching the word to her. She um, did come to church and um, come on, and she started reading her Bible. Come on. And, um, you know, Was that the one we were praying for? Don't want to say her name. It, I'm it's one of them that we were praying okay, for. Yeah, cool. but, but she's um, she's getting a little more clear in her mind and and, and getting rid of the fear and um, yeah. And so uh, uh, she says she's she's getting better. And, and Come on, she, man. And she's starting to read the word and stuff, you know. And, yeah. And so uh, she knows that if she stays doing the same thing, it's just going to be the same way. And, 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 you know, that's insanity yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. So, yeah. And then um, I prayed for uh, I prayed for the Lord to give me some work in town so that I wouldn't have to go out of town right now. And then I got a job, like, across the street. And then, like, Come three on, other man. people called me. And um, so... Uh, you know, I keep praying for that that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll leave the union and just do that kind just of stuff. Yeah, local. And, 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 and to get me more involved in the church. And so he's been working that yeah. too. I've been get to minister to people. And I've yeah, been yeah. getting to hand out some Bibles and some DVDs and yeah. and work in the church and stuff. So yeah, we got to be aware of that too. You know, um, we can ask the Lord for things. Like David was just asking the Lord, hey, give me some in-town work. I want to... I want to connect with these people and, and, and do ministry. Look at how the, the Lord opened that up. If you're not intentional about your life and your walk, you are going to miss out. You and I are put on this earth to bring God's will. And look at how the cares of this life so many times weed out Americans. They go to school for how much money they can make. I'm going to go here because I can make more money. Well, young man, young woman, do you ever pray and ask the Lord where, they, where he asked you to go to school? Did you ever pray and focus on Jesus? and acknowledge Him in all your ways so He can direct your paths. Maybe you're not even doing the very trades that you should be doing. When you sit down and you pray in the Holy Ghost, you read the Word, God will direct your paths. He'll, he'll orchestrate your steps. The Holy Ghost will bring a perfection. Listen, it's a working together with the Holy Spirit. Man, that's beautiful. That's, that's a beautiful one, thing. one more. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, and I also pray that I could give more. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got I got a little job, and since I have my unemployment, if I claimed that, I wouldn't get that. So I got to be able to give that money, and um, so so I'm gonna start praying for all kinds of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> come on, come on, yeah. Well, we have a mighty God, full of compassion yeah. and grace, full of mercy and might, and, and we <clears throat> worship Him. And the thing is, is that um, He He wants you guys, He wants you and I to co-labor with Him and talk with Him and and have that fellowship with Him and minister. If you and I aren't really intentional about sharing Christ and women's souls and things of that nature, we're actually quieting down the voice of the Lord in us. Because Jesus in us wants to reach out and love people and help people. 
And if we let um, the natural mind or selfishness overtake us, it will. If we let the cares of this life and all the pressures of this life overtake us, it will. It'll, it'll hit us, you know. Um, I had a cool miracle happen with me this last week. Um, about four weeks ago, um, I've, I'm in this medical business and we're doing different things with it. Um, you know, uh, my business partner and I were looking at the numbers and saying, man, we got a real problem here. You know, we started these facilities, but we're not going to get paid until over here. We got all this debt we got. We needed to come up with like $90,000. And, um, you know, I, I called uh, friends that had it and for one reason or another. didn't. And I said, Lord, you know, let it be the right loan. You know, sometimes you get desperate. You just want to solve a problem. But I was like, Lord, don't let anything come through that's not you. Like, speak to me or don't let. But I was just knocking on these doors and, like, looking for these different things, you know. And I had said to the Lord, you know what, Lord? I declare wealth and riches to establish your covenant on the earth. If you have me in business, let me make a lot of money and I can do a lot with it. Tom Hammond's calling. He's probably wanting to go fishing. He's got, he's got his bass boat done. Um, the Lord said, put me first. That's, that's the main thing is the fellowship with me and putting me first. Um, because I'm kind of like this, wanting to go out and do stuff so that way I can help the Lord and do stuff for the Lord. But that's not the way it is. It's a co-laboring with Him. Yeah. It's where our heart is fellowshipping with Him. <laughs> it's where we are in love with Him more than the things that we're doing. I thought it was interesting what Nathaniel Bassey was saying on, on the thing there about how you know, if you look at my life, it's what you've done for me. You know, and, and some of you guys have gone out there and you're self-made. You know, and um, so I was, uh, the Lord was like, you know, put me first. And, and we know the, to put God first, right? But I was praying for the business so that I can bless the Lord with the business. And he's like, no, 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 put me first, not the business. Don't do this so that way you can do this over here. You know, I want you. I don't need your business. I mean, he can use it. Yeah, he can. And, and the Lord told me, he says, if you'll, if you'll walk with me, he goes, everything in your life will be used when you stand before me, will be used for the gospel. You'll be so happy about what you see, you know, not only here when you see lives change, but there too, you know, because we're not living for this life. We need to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, let us do now what will matter most in the end. Yes. That means if my heart needs an adjustment, if I don't really love God, or I don't really care about the things of God, you know, God change those things. Lord, you know, we come to worship and ex exalt you and ex extol you. Well, anyways, the Lord spoke to me and said, Barry, now my business partner, partner is Puerto Rican. And he's, you know, if you know anything about Puerto Ricans, they're pretty fiery people. They're passionate people. I love them. Danny Bonilla is one of my favorite preachers. He's a Puerto Rican. When he was a kid, man, in his high school, a bunch of people got saved because he's like preaching to his high school kids in Puerto Rico. Or, or I think it was Puerto Rico. I don't think it was here. I'm not sure on those details. But um, he, the crowd was listening. He was like preaching to his, his high school friends. He's, he's backing up and backing up. More people come out. A bunch of people got saved because when he stepped back, there were stairs there. He was literally out into the midair. He wasn't even on the ground. God supernaturally had him up in the air. And that's why all these people like received Jesus in his high school. But Danny Bonilla, man, he's given powerful prophet of the Lord. He passed away with uh, this last year, kind of a tough blow. But anyways, my, my business partner is Puerto Rican. He's real passionate. Man, we need this money, you know. And we did. And um, just praying on it, the Lord said, I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring it in, you know. But all these doors were getting shut down. But I was like, God, just bring it in the right way. And um, the Lord said, you don't need it as soon as you think you need it. And it turned out that was true because normally we got to send money in to get the science stuff going and they got to create these um, scientific, um, uh, you know, they got to put the chemicals together weeks in advance. But they had already started creating them without us even giving any money. The Lord did that. He also sent out other product that they were holding up because we didn't pay. I said, Lord, I released angels over this business. And he sent out, he sent out, let's just put it this way. The he sent out $126,000 of cost of goods sold. The Lord did. Angels did. Without me even paying a dime. When I was $40,000 over my credit limit with somebody. That's, that's God's favor. That's the mercy of God. Last day, 
the right kind of money came in in the right situation. There were over four things that we shouldn't have got the money from that place. But it was the best interest rate, the best deal. It all came together. The mercy of God. And I stand back and look at my life. Even even my house that I live in, you know, back in um, 04 and 05, I was tearing up with real estate development and everything. And I built um, this house here and was doing a bunch of stuff. And um, the crash came to the market. And I had a bunch of people not paying me, man, on, on stuff that they owed me. I, I mean, people owed me a lot of money. What these builders did was instead of paying their subs is they would take all their money. Some of them were corrupt and they would like they would hide it and then they'd go bankrupt and then they could start again. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to liquidate your assets and pay all the people you owe. Well, they didn't do that for me because they couldn't sell their houses and I had framing crews and stuff. I had to sell dump trucks, tracos. I sold crane trucks, all kinds of equipment I had. I think I owed like 500 grand and I came up with like 250. So I was a little short. Anyways, I paid all my local guys, and um, I didn't pay some of the, the big banks, you know, the local subs, I paid them and stuff. And I said, Lord, you know, um, you know, I built this house, you give me this house, and I don't want things on this earth to be an idol, but I said, if my neighbors see me get foreclosed on, you know, they'll be thinking, you know, he's got all these Jesus signs, and he's foreclosed on. It's a bad testimony. I don't doubt you, God. I know what you did for me how you delivered me of demons, how your blood has saved my life and saved my soul. I don't have anything, you know, and I know, God, you can just defend yourself. You don't need an attorney. But when people look at me, they know that I'm a believer. And um, But I said, you know what? It doesn't even matter. Even if I look like a fool, you know what? Let not anything be an idol. Let me focus on you and not stuff. You know what I mean? Let me put you first. And you know what? I thought the Lord was going to bring in money because um, he said you won't lose your house. I thought he was going to bring in money to pay the bill, but instead, I didn't pay my, my mortgage for seven years. Mm. My attorney said, I've never seen anything like this. I've never yeah. seen anything like this. That's what he said to me. And I had foreclosure paperwork on my on my door, everything else like that. But yet, it went, it went to auction. It didn't sell, even though it was far below its value. Um, I called the attorney that was handling the foreclosure, and he says, well, it's in the bank's hands. And I called the bank and said, well, it's in the attorney's hands. And I was like, the angels of God were like shuffling the paperwork around because nobody knew what the heck was going on. Well, at the end of the day, the bank calls me up and said, well, we want to work with you. And I was able to remake the payments and they never foreclosed on me. And you, you always see a bank foreclosing on somebody when they don't owe that much and they got all this equity. You don't usually see them foreclose if they're upside down. I had a ton of equity. They should have foreclosed on me. But God. And his mercy and his grace. If it wasn't for God's mercy and grace, I would have been possibly homeless. But even if I was homeless, I should be worshiping the Lord. You know what I'm saying? No matter what your circumstances is, it's not about what you're going through. It's about your heart for Jesus and about your attitude and your perspective about worshiping God and putting God first. And so I'm thankful to him for his mercy because sometimes I've gotten beat up in life, but Jesus has stood there and defended me. But I think we got to come to a point where we're more focused on the Lord Jesus and the miracle. And I think I think if you guys, if we will, you know, realize that whether we live or die like the Hebrew children, they said, you know what? They said, you know what? We know God's able to deliver us. Even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow down. Yeah. We're not going to worship these false gods, whether we yeah. live or die. And, and whether you're facing whatever you're facing today, even if it looks impossible, if you're facing financial troubles or cancer or whatever, hey, I don't care if I win or lose. Jesus is the champion. He is the Savior. He's the King. His word is true, and every man's a liar. I stand on His word. And just like they were talking about that woman going home from that ministry time. And here it is. Her 15-year-old daughter dies. And she doesn't do anything but start, I will worship you forever, love you forever, God, you are beautiful. You know, come on. And then all of a sudden, her daughter comes back to life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, that's faith. Faith is thanking God. Faith is, is standing. You know, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. He who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I'm, I'm going to say today, this group right here, we are, we are ill. We are sick. And the reason why we're ill and sick is because I had asked a question this morning about a testimony of what God has done for some of you. 
And in the last two weeks, nobody here had stood up except for David to say that there was these miracles or God did this or there was a soul saved or I prayed for this person and they were healed. A church that does not seek the loss is lost itself. If all you're doing is looking at your belt, look, man, when you were back smoking marijuana, all you cared about was that bag of Doritos. And you know what I mean? Your selfish little agenda later for that. We've got an exciting life in Jesus, man. Let's get on with it. Are you guys awake? Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Do you want to be here? Not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you? Come on. There you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so Hallelujah. here's here's the thing, man. Um, it's an excitement to hear the Lord's voice. It's an excitement, my friends, to battle and to see the victory. But I want to tell you today. I think sometimes the reason why some of you guys maybe don't see the victory is because you look at the circumstance and not as at God's word and you give up too soon. I don't know if I shared this testimony. Look, guys, you and I, many of you here, you know for a fact that if Jesus wouldn't have been there, you wouldn't even be alive today, that you should have been dead, myself included. And so we're thankful for his blood that saved us and did these things. Many of you have seen great, great things happen. You know, I, I've, I've talked with each one of you how God's done different things in, in your life. He saved you for a plan and a purpose. You have a book that is written about you and a destiny and a plan of heaven that is there. If the blood of Jesus is on you, you're marked. When you go around, demons tremble with Christ inside of you. You can impact your work environment and see people saved. Because these, these demonic forces are pushed back. And the presence of God is on you. You have angels around you. Listen, you have a destiny. You have a purpose. You have a calling. There's, there's, there's a plan there. And I, I want you to know that, that a lot of times, you know, it's easy to have faith when you pray and you see it happening instantly. But sometimes the battles are a process. Like that brother that um, we were praying and the Lord spoke to us to go to his house and to pray over his family because of his their bondage that was in his family and they wouldn't come to church and they wouldn't come in. So we snuck in there in the morning without anybody seeing, laid hands in the house for two months, three to four times a week, three times a week, sometimes two, sometimes four, you know, it's fluctuate. We tried to do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The three of us prayed until the devil was broken off of that family and there was total restoration. This week, a minister friend of mine, um, precious brother, real tender heart, the Lord call, told me, he says, call him up and pray with him about some things in his family and fight with him because he needs that encouragement. He says, one will send a thousand fleeing, two will send 10,000 fleeing. So there's been some real issues going on. And I called him up. I said, the Lord told me to call you and to, that we're to pray this way. And we're going to see the victory. And he says, you know, just an hour ago, I was asking the Lord, I'm so weak and I'm so um, uh, laden in this battle and I don't know what to do and I haven't seen the victory. I need a word. And then I called him like an hour later and said, hey, here's what the Lord is telling us to do. Here's what we're going to do. And we've started on this process. The next day, he, it didn't all change. We're still going until we see the complete victory. But the next day... Um, the people, the situation that was going on, they texted him when they hadn't talked to him in months. Or, or you know, there was, there was things going on. And, and uh, there was a positive result, is what I'm going to tell you. And um, what I'm trying to say to you is that you and I have the authority yes. to rebuke yes. the devil yes. and his works. Yes. And so we need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, my friends. And the leadership of the Holy Spirit, just like the early church did, they did not do things based on their intellect. They did things based on a relationship. What happened when Peter was sitting there? He's thinking, you know, having real Jewish tendencies about, you know, not eating certain foods and all this. And then God gives him a vision, dream. He says, don't call unclean what I've called clean. Go here. Angel comes. He goes and ministers. You'll, you'll find 
So many times in the book of Acts, my friends, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation, the only time that there wasn't supernatural miracles was when they were having meetings about dealing with stuff. They were having a, a meeting, a planning about, you know, ministering to the elderly people that were getting left out and different things. You didn't see miracles. Maybe the Holy Spirit was like, man, these meetings are too boring. I'm even out on this one. No, meetings are important. They're important to organize and make sure we're doing God's uh, thing. But I was asking earlier, do you guys know what the nine gifts of the Spirit is? You guys looked at me like frogs in a hailstorm. Nine gifts of the Spirit should be something you're operating in. When you pray in other tongues as a believer, because every believer has the ability to pray in tongues if they want it, according to the Word of God. Luke eleven thirteen, Acts two thirty eight, all of them, all the scriptures say all believe, everybody, all, everyone. That's not some, that's everyone. Now everybody can't operate in all the diversities of tongues anytime they want, but if you're a believer, you can operate in tongues for personal application anytime you want, whenever you want, and you can receive that gift. So don't let anybody else tell you that it's only for certain believers. That's a lie to keep you out of the goodness of God and the river and the good things that He has for you. Don't listen to lies that will keep you from the fullness of what Jesus has for you on this earth. Walk with Jesus in fullness. Co-labor with Him. Get to know Him. And so, we're talking about the nine gifts of the Spirit. What do you have? Revelation gifts. What are they? Word of knowledge. What is word of knowledge? It's where you have knowledge of something that you shouldn't know. There was a brother by the name of Bloomfield, uh, Ray Bloomfield, up in Canada. He's about 85 years old, if he's still alive. And if I told him to come to this service right now, I'd call him up and say, Brother Ray, can you come minister? He could call every one of you out by your first, middle, and last name with such a word of knowledge. That's the word of knowledge that brother walks in. When I call him up to talk to him on the phone, he'll tell me what I called about and give me the answer right there. Try that one on for size. <laughs> you know? And there was another one of my friends that had some serious sins that he did. And he goes, I know all about it. And here's what the Lord's saying. It's like, oh my gosh, man. <laughs> you know, you're not hiding from this brother. You know? But he had a word of knowledge. That's a word of knowledge. Word of wisdom is knowing the future. And a word of wisdom. You might have a word of knowledge that, hey, the Lord's telling me that you're drinking a bump, bunch of um, uh, Coca-Cola or pop all the time. And that you have diabetes. And the word of wisdom is you need to cut down on that and drink more water. You know, or something like that. The word of wisdom is also telling the future, knowing the future. People think prophecy is the future, no? Prophet, prophecy is comfort, edification, exhortation. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirit. Those are the revelation gifts. Those are the ones that, my friends, let the fear of the Lord come in you. Because it opens the door for wisdom, understanding. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. problem is we don't have a lot of fear of the Lord in the church today. The reverence, the respect, the love for God. People are just whatever feels good, you know, just kind of waltz into church. Sometimes in places in the world that we go, people walk four or five days, many miles to come to a meeting. They're so hungry. You see God do great things based on their faith expectation and their seriousness about walking with the Lord. It's not a, it's not a convenient gospel. It's intentional. It's on purpose. It's focused. It's everything. And that's the way we should be with what we're doing in Jesus was very intentional about going to the cross for you and I. And it's this blood that made the difference yes. that we can be sons and daughters and enter into the family and have all the inheritance. Everything was paid for. Listen, I'm going to give you a scripture. It's Romans 8 something. It's in there somewhere in the 30s, I think. It says, He who did not spare his own son, how shall he freely not with him give you all things? Meaning God didn't even spare the death of himself. He's not holding anything good back from you. If you're not walking in the blessing and the goodness of God, it's because you either don't want to or you're ignorant. And both of those can be changed. You can ask God to change your heart and you can learn and not be ignorant. The Bible says that my people are destroyed because they're lacking knowledge. Word of knowledge is knowledge that you didn't previously have. I was with a denomination that didn't really operate in the gifts of the Spirit. And this guy just got grilled through a board of directors. He was being sent to China. I was sitting down with him at a table. And I looked at the man, and, the, and he looked like Mr. Rogers, all put together with a suit and tie and everything like this. And the Lord says to me, he's connected to the, the crime family. I'm sitting there in Arkansas looking at this, and I'm not saying what denomination it is, because I love all denominations, because there's only going to be believers in heaven. There's only two types of people in this world, believers and unbelievers. Those who have the Son have life, 
You're born by the blood of Jesus into the family of God. You're a new nature. You're going to heaven. If you don't have him, you're dead. You're spiritually dead and you're going to hell. Don't go that way. Go the heaven way, not the hell way. And I don't care what denomination you are. That's not what's important. A denomination didn't die for you. Jesus died for you. That's what's important. Getting Jesus, getting the word, getting, getting the fullness of the spirit. So I'm looking at this guy. They just grilled him with all these theological questions. He looks like Mr. Rogers, and the Holy Spirit tells me that he's connected to the crime family. I'm thinking, Lord, that doesn't make any sense. But I asked him a question. My brother was there, and he's kind of, he's not really into the gifts much. I wish he was. He, you miss out if you're not operating in the operation of the Spirit. And I said, hey, I said, are you, I said, are you connected to the crime family? He goes, how did you know? I was like, well, that's what I heard. And, um, <laughs> and, he, and he said, he said, you know what? He goes, my dad came from Chicago because there was a contract on his life. He landed here in this small town. This denomination over here preached the gospel to him. He gave his life to Jesus. And that's why we're involved with this church. Now, they're not into the gifts or anything. But I'm thinking, man, if this guy's going to China, it would really help him if he operated in the spirit. It might even save his life. It's important to hear God. I think it was Henry Groover one time. He's walking in, I think, Israel or somewhere. And the Lord tells him, stop right there. He stops. A bomb explodes. Everybody around him dies. I thought, I might be wrong. It might not have been Henry Groover. I heard this testimony. Everybody around him gets blown away, except for him. Where he stopped, there was a big cement pillar that took all the shrapnel. And it protected him from getting hit. If he wouldn't have stopped, he would have been killed. My friend Teddy Bolton, he's passed away since now. He was in the Middle East. And, he, and the Lord speaks to him. He's, the Lord says, Get, go out the back door. You've been preaching down here to the Muslims. And he actually discipled the personal physician of Omar Gaddafi. Hmm. Led him to the Lord. These Muslims came to kill him. He sees the door not, not, you know, twitching on the front. He locked it. The Lord says, go out the back and go down. And they would have got, you got to listen. Listen to the Lord. He loves you. He wants to preserve you. Prophecy is preservation in business and all this stuff. Don't be a knucklehead. Open your ears and eyes. Listen and operate with the Spirit. He loves you. You can have a beautiful, a beautiful walk with the Lord Jesus. And so, you know, it's and I don't know why the Lord shared that with me about the mob with those guys. Maybe just to show them the gifts. And I should have maybe said, hey, that's the word of knowledge. You might want to get into this. The Lord has this for you. It's available. Just because this denomination doesn't say that it's something you should walk in. Jesus and the apostles said it was there. You've got salvation. That's great. But let's go on and let's operate in these other things because it'll show the resurrected Christ. So word of knowledge, word of wisdom, telling the future. God knows the future. The devil doesn't. Right? Then we got discernment of spirit. That's where you're talking to somebody and you'll know uh, right off whether they're lying to you or they're telling the truth. You'll know right off, even if they have the most likable personality, if they're nothing but a snake in a dirt bag and they're there to tear you up. You'll, know, you'll see that you'll discern the spirit of a man. You don't even have to meet him. You can see it over the phone or anything. God can show you the, the actual discernment about what's inside of somebody at that point. He's even shown me before this person will do this and this and this to you, but I want you to go ahead and help him. I'm like, well, Lord, what if I... What if I hey... They may, they may not. But the thing is, is if you walk in the love of God, God will put you in positions where, where you'll know that people will take advantage of you. They may go that way, they might not. But you're willing to be taken advantage of to try to reach somebody with God's love. Amen. Because Amen. he'll put you around screwy Amen. people because you're bigger than that. And it's not about that for you. But you love them and you walk in that, you know, and you hold that and you plant those seeds. So some, some you, you might win, some you won't. The Bible says there's wheat and there's tares. And you, you might ask yourself, why would God throw his seat on the wheat and the tares, on the hearts that are good and they're going to grow food and the ones that aren't? Well, in Judgment Day, when those people are cast into hell and they're cut off, he will say, I gave you every chance too. I'm a just God because of my love and my, my righteousness. You would think, well, I'm only going to put the seed where it's going to produce fruit. Not with God, he's casting it out everywhere. And you decide what kind of heart you are and what you'll do. And you will be given account on Judgment Day for the things you heard and saw. So now, we're looking at this, and I'm talking about the gifts. you got the revelation gifts. Now you got the power gifts. The gift of faith. you got, what's the middle one? Healings. It's plural, with an S. Why? Because it's emotional, 
those that went through abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, all kinds of abuse, the soul realm of a person that was wounded can be healed. Also the physical, what, what, what does it say in the Bible? He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes. You're healed. When you're beat with a rod, sometimes, my friend, you don't see anything on the surface, but a day later there's a mark because of the bruising. Jesus was wounded deeply. Some people are wounded deeply because of divorce, because of child abuse they went through with their parents, because of things that went on, and God's love will come in and totally heal all that. Healings. So, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, right? Discernment of spirit, gift of faith, healings. What's the other one? Miracles. Of course, you guys don't know it because you didn't say it originally. You said you didn't know it. So, but, but I'm, give, I'm telling you, there's the power gifts. The power gifts are what? Faith, healings, miracles. A lot of times they'll work together. God will show you guys a word of knowledge about somebody. Two nights ago, the Lord told me, I, I want you, I want the church to give this person a thousand dollars to help them out. I called him up. I said, Hey, how are you doing financially? Not good. I said, What I, he goes, I've been out of work a month because I've been sick with COVID. And 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 the thing is is that I said, Well, how much do you need? He said a thousand dollars. And I said, Lord, you already told me that. Wouldn't it have been cool if I had sent that and him not even say anything? Uh -oh. And then him go like, wow. I already knew. Yeah. I already knew the amount. Because God, if you tap into word of knowledge, you can literally know how much is on the gas pump before you look at it. You can mm -hmm. listen to the Holy Spirit and he'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. Get to know the Holy Ghost. Go labor with him. And not for things that are not really meaningful, but by reaching people's lives. Mm -hmm. That's why these things are important. Not for knowing how much your gas bill is at the gas pump. You know what I mean? Or knowing somebody's name. Word of knowledge. So we got the power gifts, faith, healings, miracles. Joy. Now you got the verbal or the spoken gifts, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. They work together. You might be, you know, seeing somebody at work and all of a sudden God gives you a word of knowledge that there's cancer. And then all of a sudden the gift of faith jumps on you and say, you know what? You don't have to have that. <laughs> cancer die. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they get healed. But you see power mm -hmm. and revelation working together. <clears throat> working together. Anyways. Um, and you'll see, I believe, over 57 demonstrations when we counted, when we were going through Acts, of the moving of the, these gifts. How many gifts are operating in your life on a weekly basis? Do you know God? Is He speaking to you? Is He doing things in your life? If He doesn't, you are missing it and you've got the wrong one. Get on track. Get on board. Come on board. Get in with the excitement. Not religion. Excitement is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about fire. I'm talking, let's take the bullhorn and let's go down to Six and Cooch down by Chinatown where they're shooting up and let's give them a blast. I'm talking, let's go. You know, let's get, let's get in there and, and, and let them know about the Lord Jesus. So th this morning, I want to encourage you guys in, um, in not being um, religious. Step into a beautiful relationship with Jesus, man. When you come in in the morning... I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. This life will be totally depressing until you get into the, the Christ connection. There's always something more that the devil will try to get you to think, well, if I had this, you know, things would be okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I, if I could do this, if I had this situation worked out, there's always going to be things in your life that you're dealing with, going through, things coming, going. But be like the story of Mary and Martha where one was busy around doing something. Amen. The other one sat at Jesus' feet and was listening and absorbing the things that Jesus was doing. Be like the woman, man, who took, what was it, like thirty or $40,000, the scholars said, and she took the oil and she broke it before the Lord's feet. And one of Judas, who was, who was or so, one of these guys, was saying, well, why did they do that? They could have sold that and giving it to the poor, but literally, here was the Savior of the world, going and giving his life for all people, mm -hmm. and honestly, I, and, and I could be wrong here, and if I am, I apologize to you guys, but I don't even think that this woman knew the powerful prophetic act that she was doing. Mm -hmm. In my mind, and I could be wrong, I think that she just had so much love for Jesus, mm -hmm. yeah. and what Jesus had done for her heart, that she says, I'm all in. I'm going out and I'm going to sell all I have and buy the field because Jesus' love touched my heart. 
and I'm totally changed. And this product that I used to do my trade in, maybe she was a woman of the night. I don't know. Maybe she was this or that. But she broke her most valuable Mary Kay fragrance or whatever, you know. There's always these expensive ones they come out with. And she anoints Jesus' feet for burial. And she gives everything, all of it. And yet, it was such a prophetic act because here, our Lord and Savior was giving his life for the full earth and the full world. And not only that, Jesus was purchasing once and for all our salvation, our financial freedom, um, our healing. Everything was purchased and the full accounts were paid. And you can have it by faith. You can have all this stuff by faith. But that's not even the biggest reward. The biggest reward is Him. It's knowing Him, walking with Him. He is the great reward. And so, you know, um, I don't even think, you know, she knew. I think, I think she just had such a love. She was so touched by the Master's love that she said it, ma- it wasn't even in her mind about 30 or 40,000. It's just like, this is what I'm doing. And yet, today, um, we want to be like that woman that would say, Lord... You know what? It doesn't matter about the cost. It's not about the things that we're going through. I'm not coming to Jesus like Nevada and the casinos trying to pull a lever of prayer of faith, get my, my prayers answered, and then I'm down, down the road. Yeah. It's all about me. You might come to the Lord selfishly. You might come because you were broken and beat up and bruised, and He'll lovingly welcome you in like He did me, and He'll save you, deliver you, and, and, and help you. But as you spend time with Him, you're not going to be into the selfish mode of Christianity or the casino mode of Christianity of just getting... Jesus said things like this, if, if you're in me and I'm in you, you can ask whatever you want, it'll be done. So all these selfish people try to get into that mode and say, well, how can I do these things just right, just get all these things answered? It's not about any of that. Yeah, all that will take place when you put Christ first. These things will be resolved. But you're really not going to see the beautiful miracles until Jesus is more valuable to you than getting your bank account straight or all these other things. And I'm going to tell you, on this earth, you're always going to have issues you're going into, coming out of, or about ready to go into another one. And if you can't get to know the Prince of Peace, you're going to be a bipolar Christian, and I don't see that in the book of Acts. There wasn't bipolar Christians. There was only people that walked in faith and power. Yeah, they made some mistakes. But you will see a life that was above the consequences and the issues of this world, even when they were thrown in prison. So we, we, we have that in us. Let's learn to walk in it, and, and let's learn to, to uh, you know, let's learn to get into that deeper, deeper uh, fellowship with Jesus. Yes. Lord, today, yes. Father God, I pray that as these men are here, Lord, even though some of them grew up in church and knew about you, if they're not, if they're not saved, if they haven't applied the blood of Jesus to their life, that they would do that. They're not saved just because they're sitting in, in His care. And I want people to come in His care so they'll get built up and strengthened. But they're not saved just because they grew up a Christian or had a Bible. You are the one that saves Jesus. And if they don't have you on the inside, they haven't really embraced you to step into life. They're spiritually dead. And so, Lord, if there's ones that are spiritually dead here, I pray, God, that they would come alive. And I pray, Lord, this morning that, Father God, we'd be prompted to walk into a greater relationship with you. Not because of the miracles, but because of the love for you, Jesus. But the miracles are a result or an example or a fruit of somebody that is walking with you. So, Lord, if there's no talking, if there's no miracles, if there's no moving of your spirit, Lord, awaken my friends and I to deeper levels of your power that people might see the resurrected Christ. For Lord, I do not turn one page in my Bible without seeing you do brilliant miracles. And I pray that that would be the way that it would be for us. Not because we're focusing on miracles, but because we're focusing on you. But that in those miracles, you might be glorified. In those miracles, people would be saved. In those miracles, the devil could be cracked and his kingdom destroyed. And his kingdom is built up. He's...